Hello everyone, welcome back. I have just saved the game because I don't want to do all that again. Yay, atmosphere! I probably said in a comment or something like that that we will talk about atmosphere. This is probably one of my favourite levels for that exact reason. Because the fog in this level, not not just the, you know, the volume fog as you might think it is, um, but the, the little floaty bits of just normal moving cloud on the surface. Give this particular level such a depth of atmosphere that had never been seen before in any game at all. Well, not in any game I've played, like these little floaty things. Um, the fact that it pales off into the distance and you can't really see you know, 20 meters in front of your face. Pretty, um, pretty decent. And the funny thing is, the way they did it, I just, you'll never believe me. You will believe me. It's actually, it's quite interesting, but it's, once you hear it, it's not that clever. It's just the light level, but instead of using black, they used white. So, it's just, the whole level is the same light level, but instead of fading to black when it got darker, it fades to white when it gets darker, and you get this amazing sort of pseudo-volumetric fog effect, which isn't really volumetric fog at all. Any more than the standard Doom lighting engine is volumetric lighting. This is way before we had anything of that caliber, that ilk. You know, this would all have been rendered in software, don't forget. We're talking about software rendered um, on like a 386. This all would have been done originally, so we couldn't afford things like software uh, software went with volumetric lighting, really. I'm glad that I uh, got rid of most of those before something happened to cause them to fall down anyway. Breakable pots. All these things are just so new. I mean, obviously, we had breakable pots in Zelda, even with traps inside, but it didn't really... Zelda was hardly a, a, an immersive game. It kind of was an immersive game, but it wasn't a first-person immersive game. But all games are immersive if you get immersed in them, if you know what I mean. Which is very much of truism, because uh, if you didn't get immersed in them, they wouldn't really be immersive and vice versa. But we can describe it as immersive if you couldn't get immersed in it, but um, I guess the immersion of a game like Zelda is just in your uh, investment in the characters and your sort of it's more of that willing suspension of disbelief, which is apparently the buzzword of the day. But... Oh, hello. I should have known you were there by the fact you were lighting the place on fire. Um, the willing suspension of disbelief, in general terms, is simply that you're prepared to believe that what you're looking at represents what the people who made it say it represents. So in a game like Zelda, especially the early 2D uh, Zelda games, the tile-based Zelda games, oh god, this is bad, <laughs> help. You are fully invested in the idea that these very square corridors and things are actually a palace, you know, with no, where you can't sort of see down the stairs because you're on a different level and it has to load, etc. Um, and no one minds you exploding their pots. Whereas in this game we have a sort of a very similar idea. It's not quite so. I don't want to say crude, but you understand. It's it's crude in the in the nicest sense of the word. It's literally a, a, a decrease in quality of ability of engine, right? It's pixel art and it's tiles rather than 3D stuff with at least some modicum of high-res textures. This is another one of those. Um, things that they experimented with in Hexen. You can see how it's... doesn't quite look right. This may be a feature of the re-implementation of the engine. But these are all just silent lifts going up and down. Which is possibly obvious just based on the fact that you know, that's what it looks like. But in the original engine, if you didn't... if you had a, a, a floor that went up and down like this, and you didn't put any texture on the side, you wouldn't see the edge of it. Hello. I genuinely thought you would not come this way, but you did. Maybe we should use mana, but I kind of want to save it for those serpents that are around the corner we've seen, or any sort of dire situation. I found myself min-maxing to a huge extent now that we've uh, learned about it. Let me have a look. So you see how you can see the basically the edge of that. In the original engine, the floor would continue until it drew the next floor. And what that will produce would be some sort of I don't know, it's hard to 
describe, but it would be a much smoother effect, basically. Uh, in this engine, they seem to have fixed it to some extent, but I don't know if it really counts as fixed when it was used as an effect. But these look like blocks going up and down, which is not necessarily the greatest thing in the world. There's a lot of slime sounds as well, which is worrying me because... That was not lit. That was confusing me because I was looking for the dark. Yes, there we go. I knew we had to light one of them. At least, I believed that I knew that, but I couldn't figure out which one to light. So, I got mighty confused. We are taking a lot of damage every time we get hit. I don't know if that sort of increases. Ooh. Okay. It's just our uh, serpent staff again, unfortunately. It means we can start using mana a little bit prodigiously, though, so that's okay. Maybe we should. I don't know how much mana we get for it. And I like the idea that maybe someone has gone this far and not found it yet. We've had to we definitely had to pull a switch, which is behind this. I'm trying to not shoot this thing too much when it's going to shield it, but easier said than done, I guess. I'll try and grab some HP from them as well, since that's the real strength of this weapon. It does go down quickly in mana, though. I love how we bob up and down with it. Uh, as you'd expect, it's just a little lift, right? It's the floor moving up and down. Nevertheless. Just opening these to make sure we're not going to get royally attacked. Alright, that will open that, then. No doubt. That will open the next one, which is this one. Again, these, these don't overlap in any way. The whole level is made up of non-overlapping segments. You'd forget, wouldn't you? And I'm going to go on about it again, but it's another one of those disbelief things. I'm not quite sure what the things I'm looking at are really representing. Does that make sense? I mean, I get there's a, a hut here in the forest, in the, in the swamp. Try and grab some uh, HP out of this thing. But why would there be? And why was there a door at the back of the other hut that apparently just brought us into another bit of swamp which was wobbly? Now, what were these connecting things? What, what was going through the designer's mind? In more modern games when they had, first of all, much more to play with in terms of Z-axis work rather than just having to have it floors and ceilings that didn't overlap. Ooh. It, is, it tends to be a lot more obvious what they were going for, even if they were just trying to cut a corner, I suppose. Representing, uh, I mean, I'm thinking of currently the mines in Unreal, the original Unreal, of which Rorax also has a series, but, you know, don't let me be the only voice that speaks for Rorax's channel. I kind of expected that to open this, but apparently it does not. That's nice. I like that this is that. That's a nice touch, actually. Um, that is obviously programmable. If you have a, a side, you can tell it that when it gets used, it will display a message. And that's literally all that is. And yet, again, I don't think we had such things like doors that tell you that you can't open them yet. Until we had a scripting engine like Hexen's. But I was talking about the mines from Unreal, which are very short by modern day standards, that's for sure. That was an excellent shot, and I would have said so in Isaac too. Um, but they they seemed like mines, you know, they had basically one of everything, which is uncommon for an actual mine. If you had an actual mine, you'd probably have many control rooms and many mine shafts and many everything. Um, whereas this was just, here's one of each thing and you will believe that you've been in, into a mine, but I do, because to all intents and purposes I have, I got all the relevant... Oh, I accidentally picked up a thing for 1 HP, which is not a good idea. Um, but there was no, what is this bit that's connecting A to B? There's no, what is the developer going for here sort of question. I usually know what it is. I do like that effect. There's no reason for those to be separate um, sectors as well. It could have just all gone down at once, but obviously they were playing with the... The assumption that the people that were playing the game had a little bit more in terms of system resources to play with than the, uh, the, the Doom players would have had, or the same people would have had when playing Doom. I think that's supposed to be a drawbridge, but 
Again, some things are let down simply by the fact that you have to have that wall that goes all the way down there, for example. You can't have a drawbridge that is floating in the air in a game like Hexen because the original Doom engine just doesn't support things underneath other things. And that's even true now that we've got you know, rotating and sliding things. They all have to be full height walls, which I mentioned right at the start, because we still only have floor and ceiling. These are all floor and ceiling. So that particular limitation seems to be what causes us to have these situations where we're going, what is this I'm looking at sort of supposed to have been? What were they thinking when they made this? And not in the, what are you thinking when you made this? You know, are you out of your gourd sort of thing? I'm not trying to be disparaging about the efforts that they've made. I'm just trying to say that to a, a modern viewer who has seen many more games and has had a much greater exposure to things that are very much more clearly what they appear to be, like in Fallout, for example, everything is basically what it is. What does that do, do you think? Do you reckon you can get over here and not have dropped the drawbridge yet? That would be interesting. So we want to get this out and just shoot. No, not this. You can you can die the old-fashioned way. You can also protect me from that server over there. Oh, so can you. I mean, oftentimes it's obvious. We are in a keep with a drawbridge, and there is a sort of a, a, a turret here, and it is locked. But it is very narrowly representative of the thing that it's supposed to be. These are big. Oh, no. I flinched my arrow. These are the. An actual keep would be huge. And as 2016 gamers, we have seen huge keeps. We've played fantasy games with massive... Ooh. Um, there's a baddie in there. Very silly. We've seen 2016 keeps that they're massive. We've seen absolutely humongous levels that never seem to require loading because we've already got the whole thing. It's outrageous how much we get these days, and therefore in the old days they had to cut corners, they had to suggest rather than present. And we end up looking back on it with this sort of, I get what you were trying to do, but you didn't really do it, sort of thing. Like, why is there a massive pit? I don't, I don't begrudge the massive pit. Don't let me uh, give you that impression, but I need the castle key. I think I knew that. There will be a keyhole with a horse's head on it. And we will apply the key that we have to that keyhole. Apparently we're going down here. I was going to go through the door that I can obviously open. Which is another trope. This door, you can't open it. You just go, Arr. The other door said it was barred from the other side, but that's interesting because it means that... It gives you a clue. It's the first time I've seen clues in games that say that maybe you should try and find... Uh, maybe it's not. I mean, they were doing it quite a lot in... Um, in games like Zelda, but it's the first 3D game where we had sort of a, a puzzle element to it, uh, an exploration, a, a try this differently sort of approach that was part of the game rather than just sort of trial and error. Well, this one's interesting. I don't know how we get out. You want to go in? Sure. No, no. Fine. You hear a door open in the distance. So that is probably the door that it told us was barred from the other side. So I was wrong. <laughs> it apparently has nothing to do with um, going around a different way. But, you know, it, it gave us the hint, at least, that we should be maybe coming back here later. This, I don't know about. We will go through it at some point. This door has opened. We have a... Icon of the Defender. Not quite sure what it does. I think it's just either invincibility or very high armor for a limited period of time. We've got the castle key, but I want to go through there because I don't remember where it goes. I believe it goes to the other level that we have and seen yet. That was uh, a very sneaky move, Stalker. And kudos to you for hiding out all that time. The enemy bided its time. Bade its time, bode its time. Should we go up here? Never been up here yet. 
um, waiting for me to make a mistake. These have opened. So this must be a, another shortcut. So I uh, would expect to find, if we go up here, this is the way we came in. Yeah, so here's our very first house, which again, what is it? Let's have a look at it. It's got Afrits in pots on things that come down. It looks like it's broken, which it's an aesthetic that I have always, I want to say admired. Um, even as recently as playing Minecraft, I would prefer to make the sort of the grunge, broken, dilapidated type of builds rather than a, a fresh one. Mostly because it means that you can just make random mistakes and it looks okay, but also it means you don't really have to think about it. Which one do we go? We've got the castle key. So we go up here. But I, th I think it was inspired by the fact I played these games so very, so very often. We'll smash these because we can. There's a button there. There's a library here with books that obviously don't fit in the wall because the wall's like an inch thick. We press this button and that probably opens the door downstairs. Which I recall has fireplace. There's like a hall down here. So again, you'd be going, I see what you're doing. But why would you have like a half a spiral staircase and then like a, a dining hall? It might no sense. What's the matter you? I mean, you could you could argue that there is no reason why somebody would not build this sort of thing. An underground hall, various security mechanisms. We can assume that maybe the the enemies are here as a result of the evil of what thorax or whatever the uh, enemy at the end of this is called. There's Afrits in the fireplace, which is very appropriate. Um, like we can we can theorize that they're not here. It's not like this person has made a horde of guardians and filled their castle with it. More like they've taken over. But maybe not. It's another thing that's not really explained. So that's open. So it assumes itself. That's very Wolfenstein. I like it. 43 uh, mana. 109 mana. I like that that's the same on both sides. It's like it's a divided with a single unit. Of course it's not really a single unit. When we start playing other games we will of course go on and on and on about their engines too. Rather than talk about gameplay because honestly there's not much I talk about in terms of gameplay. Uh, ow. Uh, shit. Um... Ow. That's going to be difficult because they're centaurs. Where did we go? Oh. I'm going to complete that level back to that point, And in the next episode, I'll bring you back at the start of that lift. And you can see how many times it takes me to succeed. <laughs> it's going to be a lot. Uh, so until next time, thank you for watching. This is a slightly shorter episode, but I hope that you are grateful for me ending sooner and waffling on a little bit less and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.